Wow. Mira. Qué bonito. Hotspot de, de cangrejo. Sí. Hotspot. Creo que nadie visualizó algo así en la, en la costa. Wow. I think this sort of exploratory science gives you a new way of seeing the world. It's like opening up a door to an entire new room of your house you didn't realize existed. And thinking that these new places we're seeing, these new discoveries we're making, how does it fit with what we had come to believe and assume was all that there was? So the Falcor 2 is off the coast of Chile and it is exploring the Chilean margin up and down the, the whole coast of Chile. We're after a few different types of ecosystems. The first are the submarine canyons, and those are spots where there's a lot of interaction between the coastal surface world, stuff coming off of the continent and down into the ocean. The other are the methane seeps, in general, methane seep is just a, a focused area of high methane concentration in the sediments. And the seeps create little oasis, so they're hot spots of biodiversity. We're used to that what comes from the energy source of the planet is the light and the photosynthesis, and here we're talking about another system that is completely different. que es totalmente diferente son lugares donde no llega la luz y, y, que, se, y que se mantienen por la, por la, por la quimiosíntesis. It is not easy to find methane seeps. It's often a little bit of a needle in a haystack situation, so it is definitely a challenge. El, el océano es tan grande que si uno no tiene algún dato concreto de una posición, uno podría estar buscando, buscando y no encontrar nada. If we need to map from the ship, we're looking for mounds of carbonate rock, and the real smoking gun would be bubbles. Our, our instrument that measures methane concentration in the water is, is detecting uh, by far the highest levels right over this mound feature. Uh, that certainly, what's that? Bubbles? Bubbles, there's a bubble stream. We have gas bubble stream. Fantastic. Oh, look at those bubbles. Bubble string. A pesar de que uno podría decir que son ecosistemas eh, pequeños, bueno, cumplen un rol dentro del funcionamiento global del planeta. Eh, hay una conexión entre el océano, la atmósfera y la Tierra, por lo tanto, en la medida que estos ecosistemas se vayan eh, estudiando y conociendo, vamos a ir entendiendo también esta relación que hay. Methane is a very strong greenhouse gas. There are big links between places like these methane seeps and climate change. We know a lot or a lot more about methane seeps off the coast of North America, for example, or in the Gulf of Mexico, but we don't know a lot about the ones in South America. Tiene también relevancia en cómo funciona el océano también para captar o eh, capturar CO2 que se relaciona también con el calentamiento global. Oh, no. no, don't let the squid get them. <laughs> A través de, de la tecnología de este arco podemos, por ejemplo, filmar y podemos obtener muestras biológicas eh, sin dañar el fondo marino, que es algo también muy importante para nosotros. Ya hemos logrado documentar parte de la desconocida biodiversidad marina que vive en este interesante ecosistema. You're using so many different tools and capabilities, whether it's the ROV or the CTD or the multi-core or the gravity core or the bongo net. There's all these different ways of understanding the ocean. We're not necessarily knowing what we're going to find. That is very exciting. It's also a little bit scary, but I think it's a huge both luxury, but also a necessity that uh, the Falcor 2 is, is enabling us to do as a scientific community.